Hello, my name is Mary Roddy. I'm a radiologist from Charing Cross Hospital in London and a member of the UK Osarix user group. And today I would like to talk to you about how to transfer sets of cases to colleagues in different parts of the country or the world who might need some of your cases for use uh, in a course or for teaching purposes. Now in the olden days we might have uh, burned the original DICOM data onto a CD, popped the CD into the post um, and sent it off to our colleague but they would then have had the problem of sorting through all the DICOM files at the other end, anonymizing the case and that's quite a lot of work uh, for the other person who's probably already quite stressed because they're getting ready for a course. Um, so what I want to show you today is um, a way that you can send nice, prepared, anonymized cases to your colleague and make their life much easier at the other end. So if I open up uh, my Osarix, and at the time of recording this video, I'm using version 5.9 with the 64-bit extension, you will see that in my documents database, um, I have imported three patients. There are two examinations on Richard Bertoun uh, and single examinations on Clint Eastwood and Helen Mirren. And you may have guessed that these are fictitious names for the purpose of this demonstration. So I could simply send those cases off to my colleague, but they're not anonymized. So I would prefer to anonymize them first. Now let's go to Clint Eastwood and his um, chest x-ray. What I tend to use is our anonymization protocols uh, within OSIRIX. And if I click on the anonymization protocol and go to the list of different uh, protocols, you can see we have different protocols for anonymizing for the museum, for our own teaching museum or the discrepancy meeting. But the one that I'm going to use for this purpose is something called test set. That's a very simple anonymization protocol and I'm going to just open out um, the box so that you can freeze frame and take these DICOM headers down if you want. Um, but what you'll see is this anonymization protocol will take a whole s series of DICOM headers that we have selected that identify uh, patient sensitive information in our institution and we've set those to be cleared or reset. But we have also asked for three uh, DICOM headers to be given exactly the same case number. So patient name, patient ID and study instance UID have all been allocated the name case 001. Now I can change that to whatever I want, but it's important that I keep those three names the same if I want this case to appear on one line of the database. And I've also got the option here to change the name of the examination. Now in this case, we know we're looking at a chest radiograph, so I'll just change that to CXR. I'll keep these the same because this will be good to be sent as case one of the cases that I'm sending to my friend. And I now have the option of either replacing the original case with an anonymized version or adding an anonymized version to the original unanonymized data set. And I always choose to do the latter. So if I press add, what will happen is that you will see in the database, as well as the original unanonymized case, I now have case 001. And I can fill in comments to the diagnosis here, which is TB. So if I go about anonymizing the second case, you will see that the second patient, Richard Bertoun, has got uh, an x-ray of the knee and an x-ray of the ankle. And if I want to anonymize this, I can anonymize both those at the same time. And I'm going to go into anonymization protocol again. And the great thing about this protocol is that it remembers what I was doing last time. So now I can just change the case number to 
zero zero two and I can write in here uh, x-ray knee and ankle and I'll do exactly the same again I'll add the anonymized case to the original data and there I have x-ray knee and ankle and I'll put um, ankle fracture and I will now delete the original case and I'll delete the original chest radiograph as well and I'm just left with one case which is Helen Mirren the wrist and we will do exactly the same thing again we will call this one case 003 and we will call this x-ray wrist and we will add it and we will call this one scaphoid fracture and we will delete the original So that's really nice and easy. I've got three cases, one of which has got two different sets of examinations, and these are all ready to send to my colleague, and I've annotated them with the answer. So what I need to do now is to create a new database to put these cases into that I can send uh, to my colleague. So if you remember, the way that we do that is we need to first of all to create a new folder. And if you look at my desktop, you'll see that I've created a folder called Mary Roddy Cases. And if I open up that folder, you'll see it's simply an empty computer folder. Now, if I open up Osirix again, what I need to do now is to make that into an Osirix database. And the way we do that is to go to File new database folder I'm going to point it at the desktop and to the file called Mary Roddy cases and press create and now I have an empty database here called Mary Roddy cases so if I go back to the default database where I've created these anonymized cases and highlight all three cases I can simply copy those across into the folder and if you look at Mary Roddy cases now you will see there are three anonymized cases that are annotated ready for my colleague to use in their meeting. Now if I look at the case on my desktop you will see that now it has something inside it called a Sirex data if I look inside that, I'm not going to see case 1, case 2 and case 3 because you don't see that, but believe me, those cases are in there. Now the beauty is that I can now either email that folder to my colleague or in my case I would prefer to use Dropbox, uh, which is a very good way of sharing slightly larger files. So I would drop that folder into Dropbox I would share it with my colleague and then when they have copied that folder onto their own computer and pointed their own Osirix to open that database, they will see exactly the same as I can see on my computer here, which is the labelled cases, labelled 1, 2 and 3 with the type of examination and the diagnosis written on the side. Now that's a much nicer way to send cases to your colleague than expecting them to sort through all the DICOM files and do all the anonymization themselves. So if I could encourage you, if somebody does ask you to send some cases for teaching purposes, use this technique 
and you will save the person at the other end a huge amount of work. So just to summarise, what I've explained today is how to set, take a set of cases to share with a colleague, to anonymise them uh, into new case numbers and to label them with the diagnosis, and then to make a new database folder which you can copy these cases into and then send using something like Dropbox uh, to share the cases nice and easily. I hope you found that was helpful. Very best wishes from London.